like to say that she behaved like a man, by which they mean that she understood politics and tried to wield political power. She was absolutely determined that her son was going to become emperor, and she didn't care how many people she had to walk over in order to achieve it. When the emperor Claudius was widowed, Agrippina embarked on a campaign of seduction. Within a short time, she had married him and began to work relentlessly on the advancement of her son. When Nero was 13, she persuaded Claudius to adopt him, and when he was 16, she engineered his marriage to the emperor's daughter Octavia, Nero's stepsister. While Nero's fortunes rose, the position of Claudius's natural son Britannicus was becoming increasingly difficult. Nero was four years older, which meant he took official precedence over his stepbrother. As Nero took on more and more duties, Britannicus was sidelined. In 54 AD, Agrippina decided the time was right to make a bid to put Nero into power. According to the Roman historian Tacitus, only one obstacle remained, the aging Emperor Claudius. Agrippina had long decided on murder. Now she saw her opportunity. Her agents were ready. The poison was administered by the eunuch Halotus. It was sprinkled on a particularly succulent mushroom. Claudius's weakness for cooked mushrooms brought about his death on the 11th of October, 54 AD. The next day, the Praetorian Guard declared Nero emperor. At the age of 17, he had become ruler of the biggest empire the world had ever seen. But while the Romans celebrated their new boy emperor in the streets, Nero was already showing a disturbing tendency towards violence. The year was a time of peace abroad, but disgusting excess by Nero in Rome. Disguised as a slave, he ranged the streets, brothels and taverns with his friends who pilfered goods from shops and assaulted wayfarers. When it became known that the waylayer was the emperor, attacks on distinguished men and women multiplied. For since disorderliness was tolerated, pseudo-Neros mobilized gangs and behaved similarly, with impunity. Rome by night came to resemble a conquered city. Nero's growing appetite for violence would soon find a target closer to home. Nero was insecure because he knew that Britannicus was actually the natural son of the previous emperor and that he had been adopted and some people thought that Claudius had been manipulated into adopting him. Nero decided to murder his rival, but according to his first century biographer Suetonius, he needed a method that would not arouse suspicion. To achieve this, he would need help. Against Britannicus, he employed poison, no less because of the competition he posed in singing. He had a much pleasanter voice than through fear that one day he would prevail in public favour. He obtained it from a certain Lacusta, who was an expert poisoner. He gave orders that the substance be brought to the dining room and given to Britannicus. When Britannicus collapsed, Nero rewarded Lacusta with immunity from prosecution and an ample estate. He even sent her pupils. Britannicus out of the way, Nero and his mother reigned with impunity. They passed laws and appeared on Roman currency together, with Agrippina acting as the young emperor's self-styled regent. 
she was determined to maintain absolute control of her son, and according to Tacitus, she was prepared to go to any length to do it. According to one author, Cluvius Rufus, Agrippina's passion to retain power carried her so far that at midday, the time when food and drink were beginning to raise Nero's temperature, she several times appeared before her inebriated son, all decked out and ready for incest. Their companions observed sensual kisses and evilly suggestive caresses. His mother had been the architect of his rise, and she wanted him to remember it all the time. And initially, of course, he was prepared to be grateful, but he got tired of it and decided that the only cure was to get rid of her. As Nero's thoughts turned from devotion to murder, he hatched a bizarre plan. He ordered the construction of a booby-trapped boat designed to fall apart when under sail. When the boat was completed, he invited Agrippina to join him at the resort town of Baiae for a festival. After a pleasant evening together, Nero kissed his mother farewell and left by land, while Agrippina left by sea. Midway across the bay, concealed lead weights crashed through the boat's roof and it began to sink. But the injured Agrippina managed to swim to safety. When Nero heard his mother had survived, he was terrified of what she might do and immediately dispatched assassins to her villa. The murderers closed round Agrippina. First, the captain hit her on the head with a truncheon. Then, as the lieutenant was drawing his sword, she cried out, strike here, pointing to her womb. Nero's rise to power had cost the lives of his mother, his stepbrother, and his adoptive father. Now, with absolute control of the empire, Nero would indulge his appetites for cruelty and self-indulgence to the full. protect Roman citizens and secure the empire's borders by force. Nero had little interest in the affairs of state. He preferred to indulge himself in lavish banquets where he would perform his own compositions to his friends. As the empire began to go into decline, Nero's response was to perform before his people on stage. In his performances, Nero liked to play the parts of both men and women. The aristocrats of the empire were outraged. It was as if the revered traditions of the emperors were being dragged in the mud before their very eyes. <laughs> 